An update on Fletcher Cox and his offseason priorities when he was cut. Was he looking elsewhere in free agency? And some other news with the Philadelphia Eagles. So definitely stay in tune for more news. What is going on, guys? Your boy, Joey Shakes. And as you come to you guys with a video right now. So first on my list I want to talk about, we heard a little bit from Fletcher Cox. And obviously, remember when he you know, ended up getting cut and then obviously he re-signed back, you know, and for a 13, 14, you know, uh, million dollar deal for the year. You know, last year for Fletcher Cox, I don't think Fletcher is going to be in an Eagles jersey after this year. Just me. If you guys remember last year at the trade deadline, there was some teams that were interested in Fletcher Cox, but the Eagles didn't pull the trigger. Now, they had Fletcher Cox on the trade, okay, on the trade block, okay? They were trying to look for, so since he was a $40 million dead cap money hit, okay, so he was $40 million in dead cap. So they did was this free agency. They pretty much had him on the trade block. They tried to off, they tried, they wanted a second round pick for him. Okay, second round pick. I forgot what his, his salary was for this year, but it was a lot, you know what I mean? Um, and so they couldn't get anything done, so... The news behind it was they tried to get a restructure done for Fletcher Cox, and it looks like his agent couldn't get anything done. So they ended up instead of they ended up cutting him, and then obviously reacquiring him. Now Fletcher Cox kind of knew what was going to happen. You know he went he was in free agency for almost two days, and there was some teams with some interest. I don't know what teams there were, but there was some teams calling. But Fletch put everything on hold to say, you know, this, this, the talks with the Eagles are, are coming back up and, you know, after two days. And uh, he really didn't worry of, about not coming back. They would get something done. But I think because of the deadline in the offseason for restructures or something with Fletcher Cox's contract, uh, they were past the deadline. So the Eagles decided to cut him. And then obviously probably telling him most likely, hey, we're going to cut you, but we're going to try to, you know, bring it. You know, we're trying to cut him, but we're going to bring him back, blah, blah, blah. You know, probably telling his agent that. And then they got something done. So theoretically, like this is a contract year for Fletcher Cox. And, and you know what? I'm looking for him to be the Fletcher Cox we all know. Okay. He was, I think the past couple seasons, he's had a couple down years. It's not really about the sacks. It's about what I see from him getting single blocked and obviously straying away from, you know, Fletcher Cox and going towards Javon Hargrave with that double team after week five or six of last year. And knowing that Hargrave is obviously the, the tone setter for that defensive line and not Fletch anymore. So now getting Brandon Graham back, helping him on the edge. I, I hope it does help. Um, we need to see more from him because what I could see happening is if Fletch is not playing well, okay, they might, and if Jordan Davis is playing better, they might move him up and move Fletcher Cox into the second rotation of defensive tackles with, you know, Milton Williams, if that's even the case. So I have high praise for Fletcher Cox this year, and he probably won't be back, guys. I mean, it is what it is. So um, they brought that dead cap from 40 to 12. I know it. it, it we're still going to get dead cap from it um, after he leaves after this year. Um, but it's not going to be as bad. 13 more, I think 13, $14 million fully guaranteed. So, um, that's the whole story with that. So Fletch kind of already knew the whole time he was in, he was pretty much in free agency for two days and then the talk started, you know, coming around and, and he kind of knew he was coming back and he, he knew that something was going to work out. So that's, that's a good thing. Uh, next on my list is is uh, Dallas Goddard had some nice things to say about Britton Covey, the wide receiver from Utah, you know, undrafted, um, Damn, man. I mean, I got Dallas Goddard has high praise for, for Britton Covey, what he brings to the table. And, um, yeah, I mean, he, uh, he did, a you know, apparently he had a really good OTAs. He looked really good. And this is one of my favorite players as much as everyone's like, dude, he's not going to make it. He's going to be a butt Joe. How do you hell you see anything from this guy? Look, as far as I could see him be doing anything for us is really the furthest I see him going is being that gadget receiver, like a Tavon Austin type that can line up anywhere on the field and as a running back or go out for screens or end arounds or jet sweeps or something like that or slant routes, go routes, whatever you want to do with him. I think the most, I think the less that he could do right now is I think what I'm kind of focusing him on is, is really putting him on special teams, being kick returner, punt returner, whatever the case may be. But they had him taking turns with the punt return group, I think with Gainwell, Boston Scott, um, uh, Greg Ward. I mean, we've seen Greg Ward punt return already. Uh, Scott would be another one. I don't think we've ever had Boston Scott on punt returns. It'd be, you know, he's a Darren Sproles 2.0 type guy, you know, big lower body. He can handle it. He's not as, 
you know, it's not like you have Adrian Killens on the team anymore, you know, that was literally like a stick. Okay, you could break the guy in one hit, and he's probably going to be in the damn ambulance. Um, but I'm excited for Burton Covey. I am. And look, if he turns out to be a bust, I mean, really not a bust because he's already undrafted. So there's really nothing saying that he's a bust. He's either going to be a hit or a miss. And I hope he is one of the gems at this undrafted free agent class. So I'm, I'm very excited for Burton Covey. I, I've been talking about him for a while, and I think I've been opening more, especially some of the subscribers, some other people that are new to the channel. Uh, I've been kind of opening a little bit of everyone's eyes on him a little bit. I'm not saying he's going to be a full-time slot receiver. I'm not saying that he's going to be a gadget receiver which i would love for him to be but um i would love for him to just start on special teams for right now and then kind of make his way into this offense if that's the case so i'm, I'm really excited to see him during july 26 training camp starts and preseason and i want to see the different things that he could do so i'm very excited about that now the last thing i want to talk about is i mean there's a picture of kaiser white covering britain covey speaking about britain covey which is awesome on a pass deflection diving his whole body when we have we seen linebackers actually do this and do and do it really well. Kaiser White's, uh, you know, I'm not even just talking about Kaiser White, but this linebacker group's going to be very interesting. A lot of moving pieces and who's going to start. I think with N'Kobe Dean, I think you're going to have someone that's going to, you know, they're going to move. I think, you know, early they're going to have him at weak side linebacker and then move him into that middle linebacker spot. And I think he will be starting. You know, Hassan Reg's going to be moving from Sam linebacker to edge rusher. Kaiser White could be playing the middle or the outside. I think you have a lot of moving pieces here. TJ Edwards is back. But Kaiser White's on a one-year deal. Um, TJ Edwards... I think I think this year, and that's pretty much it. So you can possibly lose two linebackers after this year. You know what I mean? So Davion Taylor is another one that actually played really well with T.J. Edwards last year. I thought that that's why they kept seven linebackers last year. If you guys remember, they kept two running backs and seven linebackers. Like, what the hell are they doing? They want to find the right combination. I thought T.J. Edwards and Davion Taylor started to really mesh well together. Um, but unfortunately, Davion Taylor was hurt. In preseason, he was hurt again by the bye week, almost week 10. I forgot what week it was by the bye week last year and with a knee injury, and then he was out the rest of the year. So injuries have stopped Davion Taylor from really putting forward his career. We drafted him in the third round when Jim Schwartz was here but never used him. I think they put him in like week 10. Jim Schwartz put him in like week 10, and he played horrible. But what do you expect? I can't even blame the guy. But I think, you know, uh, with, with uh, I'm looking for coverage. I'm looking for a lot of blitzing. I'm looking for coverage. You know what I mean? There, I mean, even Jonathan Gans putting, you know, you know these defensive ends in coverage as well, even with Derek Barnett. Well, kind of like what Jim Schwartz used to do with Barnett when he was first here, just a little bit, not all the time. But, um, you know, to see these linebackers now, I mean, we were talking about this position as the weakest position on this team and now has become one of the strongest. And, and, and really, these guys haven't really hit the field in competition like thoroughly yet with another jersey with Miami coming into town we haven't really hit that whole thing yet but guys I mean sky's the limit for these linebackers and you know I'm willing to give out a couple contracts you know and God forbid like if Kaiser White plays really well great TJ I think you're going to be picking either between Kaiser White or TJ Edwards or maybe they get deals both done for both of those guys Davion Taylor I forgot how many more years I mean he's got what, another year left on his contract I forgot um, but you have some gems, you have some good gems here and, and I need to see more competition. I need to see these preseason games. I need to see how these guys are developing and really it's up to the coaches because if these linebackers fail, it's a, it's really on Jonathan Gann. I won't even blame the players as much depending it would, you know, depending on the play and, and just depending on everything that happens, the, depending on what game, what happens. And, you know, I'll know if it's Jonathan Gannon, because if I see the same, mistakes uh, then we're going to have an issue and a problem so i like seeing that i mean like seeing kaiser white kind of die for deflection like that i love that i like seeing that when you ever see our linebackers ever do that or even come close to doing that and that's britain covey right there he runs a you know a four 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 i mean he's quick you know i mean he's a lot quicker than expected so it's nice to see that and um and yeah and kaiser white and, and to speak about kaiser white fast i mean he's pretty he was pretty good in coverage last year but could have went back to the chargers because they're definitely a super bowl contending team with that uh you know a lot of uh new pieces on defense and they're looking ready for that to be contending this year so didn't want to go back want to go to his favorite team in the Philadelphia Eagles and uh yeah the Eagles actually the first day of free agency since the first day they wanted Kaiser White they didn't and how he even said he they didn't even think they were going to get him at all and then they actually got him which I was really happy about it I was really excited and it was cool 
So, other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. That's my update on the Philadelphia Eagles. A few things, you know, we'll find out some more things on the way, um, you know, next week, the week after, you know, a few days. You know, we'll, we'll be covering everything, a little bit of news that comes out on, on certain things that are going on. So, uh, let me know what you guys think about Fletcher Cox, you know, and, and do you think he's gone after this year? Do you think maybe he's going to work for another contract for the Eagles, or do you think he's just totally done? Kaiser White, the linebacker core, what do you guys think? And then Britton Covey. You know, a Dallas guy is saying some really good things about him and really killing it at OTAs. And maybe there's some things we didn't see that the reporters didn't report, the media guys didn't report from Britton Covey. So I'm excited, not just for Britton Covey, but I'm excited for all these undrafted free agents and Mara Goodrich and Josh Job and Reed Blankenship and some of these other guys that are really going to try out for these positions. So other than that, guys, pretty much it. You guys let me know in the comment section what you guys think, and I'll see you guys later. Chicks, what up? Follow us. Peace out, guys. Peace.